Welcome to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Are you ready to get real and start living each day in purity? This dynamic program is designed to educate, encourage, and equip listeners with the tools necessary for living a life of sexual purity. Pure Sex Radio brings you the best in mobile talk radio. Listen to real life struggles, learn how to overcome lust, pornography, and sex addiction, and get serious about purity. Your hosts for Pure Sex Radio are Jonathan Doherty and Stephen Cervantes. Jonathan is the director of Be Broken Ministries and founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop for Men. Stephen is the founder of the Hope Counseling Center. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. And now, please welcome Jonathan and Stephen on Pure Sex Radio. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're glad to have you with us. My name is Jonathan. I'm here with Stephen Cervantes. How are you, my friend? I am blessed. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Well, before we get started, I just want to uh, remind you, as we do periodically, that we're a listener-supported broadcast. Uh, What this means is that the way that these... um, podcasts get to you and the way you're able to hear them is because of generous partners that come alongside and decide to support us financially. And we're grateful for all of our partners that have come along to allow us to continue to expand the outreach. It's been really cool. Uh, I was just looking at a report recently where just in uh, the last month, we had listeners in over a hundred countries around the world that were tuning in and listening to the podcast. So that's really cool. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. That's great. Thank and, you guys. Uh, so if you'd like to learn about all the ways that you can come alongside and partner with us, just go to puresexradio.com and click on the donate link. So Stephen, I'm excited about this podcast because we're going to be able to dive into um, some, some interesting things where I think people have a lot of questions about kind of the makeup of of the human being and and how do we unpack this whole dynamic of of being human and what's included in that and so why don't you share with us um, kind of where we're going to go this this time around well thank you uh, I had the opportunity to go to a little training program on prayer it was held at our church and a bunch of different churches got together and it, it's called sozo. S-O-Z-O. It's a Greek word for healing prayer. And some people uh, are, know about deliverance, ministry prayer. Well, uh, and that often invo- involves somebody speaking over you and to you and telling you and casting out evil and all that kind of stuff. Sozo prayer is inviting the person to take whatever issue it is to the Father and listen to the Father. So it's it's really elegant prayer because where should we take all our problems? Right, right to the Father, and and or should I take it like well, I got a problem, Jonathan? Why don't you tell me what to do with my problem, Jonathan? Right, yeah. You know, it's like no, why don't we go? What are you struggling with? Well, let's ask the God. Let's sit here a minute. Let's ask the Father. Tell me something about this struggle, Father. Mm-hmm. It's just it's wonderful. So it's called Sozo, and I went up to my teacher and uh, and I said, well. If anybody asks me, how's your prayer life? Can I say, well, Sozo? <laughs> he laughed. He said, well, I've never heard that one before. So uh, we might as well enjoy ourselves, folks. That's We're sitting good. here That's talking good. about the Father, Son, and we might as well rest well and play well and laugh well. We're children of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So so, I, so I, I, I look through their material, which is fabulous material. Then I go online and I start looking for material online. I found this book put together by a counselor. And I'm going to botch her last name. I better spell it. Her name is Margaret N-A-G-I-B. N-A-G. Nagib, maybe or something. Okay, you got it perfect. He said it right. Heck if I know. So, um, so she's a counselor. They're out of Bethel, uh, California, mm. or Redding, California. Bethel Church, I think. Um, anyway, I, I'm looking through this workbook, and there's this fabulous little sketch that just my head just pops and goes, wow, this is great clarity. Because there's such confusion in, in, in terms of ourselves. And you know what? I'm going to take a side trip for a minute here. I came to this realization this week that do you know why men 
and we pick on men, we talk to men here, we love men, we happen to be men. So do you know why men have a hard time understanding women and all their emotional system? It's because men don't understand themselves. Yeah. And if you don't know how your system works, if you don't understand yourself, how are you going to understand someone else? It's just confusion and chaos and words and babble and crying and whining. What the heck? It's Right? If a man is not familiar with his own system, if he doesn't learn it, map it, word it, feel it, he has no template to use with his wife. Mm-hmm. So think about this concept. <clears throat> If you don't know you, you can't know anyone else because you have no template. Mm. But if you'll map out yourself, okay, anger, okay, stress, okay, grief, okay, loss, okay, dreams, okay, hopes, okay, wishes, you know, and disappointments and sadness. And if you can tell stories and and use language and you you know your stories and your pain, then when someone else tells their pain, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Even but, if you don't have a one-to-one identification with their exact circumstance, no, that's right. when you can they're still sad, understand what they're going that, through. When yeah. they're sad, you're sad. When they're glad, you're glad. When they've lost hope, you felt hopeless at time. When they grieve deeply, then you've grieved deeply, right? Mm-hmm. And if you can be in touch with your own inner map— then you can make connections everywhere. And don't you think, I, I think that's uh, really wise because don't you think that sometimes this whole idea of why men sometimes don't understand this is as we look here at some of the breakdown of, of how this this little graph in her book uh, is broken down, we tend to lean as men mainly towards just the physical, right? Just the body. We think we're just a, you know, yes, we're just. And logic. And then and so, how and it works and, and then fix be, it. Yeah. And then because so much of the time women are more, if we could put it this way, connected to the soul aspect of their lives, it just feels like there's a tremendous imbalance. When the fact is, Every human being is made up of body, soul, and spirit. So that's the, good. The, Men the, are physical. We love to hit the ground and climb trees and punch each other, yeah. and slap each other. We're very physical. So that's it's almost good. like we're looking at not that there's this difference in how we are made up. It's just where our emphasis is. And I think maybe men emphasize the physical and the the body. Well, and I so think much God more. put that in there. Absolutely. Right? I mean, oh, and I'm not us... saying I'm not saying that that's not part of kind of our hardwiring. Yeah. But make no mistake, what we're going to get into in this episode is about we're all comprised of the same elements, if I could put it that way. Yes, in terms absolutely. Of body, soul, that's and spirit. That's right, and that's the beauty of. We have a creator, and we're the creation, and there is pattern everywhere. Look at it. Mm -hmm. There is order. We serve a God of order, and he's knowable. He told us about himself. So um, what you just said is really important. Women are better at their souls because they use language. Generally speaking. Right? And men like to use their hands and and do things and feel it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and we know little girls, when they grow up, they talk, they connect, they share, they orient towards each other. And, and, you know, they're doing a lot of soul work. Well, think about our fathers, you know. My father was a labor man, man. Mm-hmm. We were going to go do something. We were going to paint something, knock something down, build something back. We were going to rake something or fix something or break something and make it better, you know. There's a lot of physical So I really appreciate that observation. I think that's true. So back to my point. This is not the whole map. We've got another section coming where we're going to tell you some very important parts of this map. But this is the foundational first piece of the map. And it's like God gave it to me. When I saw this, I think, oh, my goodness, this is the piece I've been missing. Mm -hmm. Because you know how people talk? They talk about, like, I have a monster within, or there's this, you know, they talk about themselves sometimes like something overtakes them inside that they don't know what it is. Or they, people say interesting things like, I got, I got an angel on one side on shoulder and a devil on the other side, you know, and there's this battle going on. And in my mind, you know, this, this map sort of clarified our spirit and our soul mm-hmm. battle. Yeah. So I'm going to try to 
I'm going to draw a picture as I ask you guys to draw a picture. If you're driving, you got to use your imagination here. Right, right but, exactly. But take a, a small circle about the size of a nickel, okay, and then draw a circle around that circle, and then draw one more circle around that. So we got three circles. And the little inner one, we're going to call the Holy, uh, we're going to call the spirit, our spirit, the spirit of who we are. We have a spirit. We're made in the image of God. We're spiritual beings. And then we have a program called, uh, a place where our program is run. That's our soul. And so that's that second circle. Yep. And then the outer circle is our body. And that's the container of our soul and our spirit. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's start with the spirit part because there is our spirit and and it's just we're just we ache for meaning and understanding why am I here you know that's the spirit well, what is the meaning uh of being here what's our purpose and and then there's this universal part of us that just loves rest and it loves to be loved in the very essential things of life or almost spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, why does anybody ask the question of why am I here? Yes. And, and to me, and not to get, I don't want to go too far on a sidebar here, but a lot of times when I'm talking to people who are atheists, in other words, people who do not believe in God, I, I often take them kind of down this trail of, why do you have questions about meaning of life? If we're just atoms and matter and, you know, electrical impulses that are firing, then why do you have questions about meaning and purpose? You know what I mean? So I think there is, it's innate in every single person that there's this deep central part of our being that longs for understanding meaning, longs for purpose. And I think that's why, you know, we only find that in our maker, mm. in God, because he is our purpose. Yes, you know, well, like, and let, let me be even clear about what you just said. Not just God, our spirit, when it encounters the Holy Spirit, absolutely, yeah. right? It makes the connection on the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. I'm crying out. I'm looking for meaning. Why am I here? Why am I not happy? What's the purpose? Should I go right or left or up or down? Should I stop? Should I? What should I do? Give me a vision for my life, right? And then when we say, you know, we submit to God and the Holy Spirit enters our spirit, right? Mm -hmm. You see that Sunday morning at worship, my spirit and the Holy Spirit are having a party, right? Right, and it's a, it's not a soul thing, it's not a bio, it's not a body thing. My spirit, in deep inside, is crying out and worshiping God and saying, "I'm so glad you're God, and I'm not, and I need a, something bigger than me and mission and purpose." Thank you, you've finally given my life order and meaning. And I like the fact that she puts in here within that spirit circle, love, because I think sometimes we, we relegate that only to kind of a soul thing. Yes. And the reality is that purpose and meaning of, of loving well and, and wanting love and, you know, loving others and being loved, it comes from that deepest part of our being in our yes. spirits. And it's just right. It's so true. It's so pure. Love, right? Mm -hmm. Think about all the verses about love. It casts out fear, right? Um, what comes and to the mind? fact that God is love. God is. Thank you. you. Know, so. And it's the essence of who we are, right? To, to be in spirit is to be in love, to be one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it just feels so right in our deepest place, right? But then we have to expand out to the soul, mm -hmm. right? And that's just the circle around it, which is the program. It's it's where our programs run. It's the storage place for all our experiences and interpretations. And and what what do you fill your head with all day long? Is it worry, doubt, fear? That's coming from your soul, mm -hmm. right? The experiences you've had. If you had a rough childhood, if your parents were alcoholic, if they weren't home, if you were left, you know, those memories are there. And then program gets repeated, you know, 
I'm not that good. I don't, I don't have any friends. Nobody likes me. All, all this dialogue comes from our soul. And you, you, you hear people that are, they're almost like tormented by their own soul mm-hmm. because there's such ugly chatter in their head and they don't know what to do about it. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I share a little bit about how she's broken this you down? You go right ahead. So in that second circle where we've got soul, um, she describes it kind of as personality, like, like, like Steven's saying, man, that's kind of where we sort of like the software to our system, you know, it's like where everything starts getting worked out and she breaks it down into a few, um, areas, the conscious mind, which would include like our thinking and our reasoning. And, you know, we might even say that's kind of the prefrontal cortex it's like, Hey, there's the conscious mind, but then there's this subconscious mind and like that's a deeper. And we're going to, we're going to like that better than unconscious. No, yeah, no, no it's, it's a deeper, it's a subconscious. And mind. it's not unconscious because she puts under there things like beliefs, attitudes, feelings, emotions, memories. And this is honestly where I think we're going to camp out quite a bit here is because that's the part that is a very real part connected to our experiences in our past that often are driving a lot of behaviors that we engage in that might cause us a lot of confusion, right? Because uh, we were talking about it off air where we get guys all the time that are coming to us that say, you know what? I, I absolutely, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I love the word. And yet I keep going back to porn a lot. I keep making decisions that do not line up with like this deeper part of me. And I think that's where that subconscious, that soul part that says, Hey, you've had a lot of experiences that have torn up your emotions that have dealt, you know, you felt a lot of things that were inconsistent with some of your other beliefs. You know what I mean? And so there's this part of our being that we don't really know how to fully unpack because it's in that subconscious level of our soul. Which means just out of awareness, and you have to bring it to awareness, right? Because we got stuff running in the back, and then we wear awareness, and we got stuff that's stored, and we got to pull it up and think, let's think through that. And this is a great moment to to share why uh, something like Sozo Prayer, certainly counseling, can be incredibly helpful for somebody who's really struggling with a lot of that, those seeming conflicts in their being, because they're going, you know, like you in talked about soul, the little right? angel yes. on one shoulder, the little devil on the other shoulder, they're trying to understand that. Yes. And a lot of times, something like Sozo Prayer, something like a counselor can help sort of draw out those things that are swirling in the subconscious mind. So uh, let's go back to your angel and devil, because what I think is happening is your soul. It's not angels and devils on your shoulder arguing. It's your soul and your spirit arguing. Mm-hmm. Why can't I just have pleasure now? Oh, we're, and that's one. And the other voice says, we're practicing discipline. Right. Well, why can't I go play on the edge over there? And it's, it's not that bad, really. No, we're trying to be good. Mm-hmm. It's our spirit and our soul battling. And, and one of the two is going to win. Mm-hmm. And now, so why are we having this program on a sex talk radio? Uh, yeah. Why does this make sense? Think about this one thought, folks. Your body... And your soul, where you're troubled, your body and soul can override your spirit and hijack your spirit and take it to porn. Mm -hmm. Your body, which enjoys pleasure, and your program, which is troubled, struggling, and needs relief, can say, let's go find some porn and get away from ourselves. Or your spirit and your body can go find God. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Your yeah. spirit, you, on Sunday morning, you take your body and your spirit and you worship. But Saturday night, when you're in your room and nobody's looking, your soul and your body can get together and hijack the system. Well, it's kind of interesting if you think about how we have these concentric circles, right? You know, so you've got spirit in the middle or spirit in the very center, soul kind of in between body and spirit. So you've got body on the outside circle, soul on the middle circle and spirit on the the bullseye circle. As you look at that, isn't it interesting? I almost feel like with that, the way that's drawn in the diagram is what's supposed to happen is spirit and body 
are meant to kind of hold soul in check. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because your soul, because what happens? If you take the soul and the body, what are they doing? They can run away from the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. But with this diagram, it's saying, no, no, the spirit in the center and the body on the outside Hold that soul in check. Kind of put the squeeze on the soul, you know? I mean, I'm just saying that's kind that's of neat how the diagram funny. works that way. Yes. Instead of soul and body running away from the spirit. So so I, I, I started saying the statement, and I don't know why I started saying the statement. And then when I look at this graph, I get why I'm making the statement. Sometimes I'll say, spirit to the front. Mm. Spirit to the front. Spirit to the front. Why would I say spear to the front? Because my soul wants to jump and go, yeah. right? And Your soul wants to take the lead. That's and, right. Yeah. And so think about sexually arousing material. Mm-hmm. My soul and it my body. It appeals to all that emotion, right? It appeals to all those feelings. Right? Yes, it's exciting. And see, the thing about it, remember, you know, uh, what it, it really is about fantasy. If we break all this stuff down, don't you think porn is about a fantasy escape from my mm-hmm. reality, a fantasy escape from my soul, the unrest in my soul. It's yeah, I think a lot of it is a is not only escape from reality, it's we look at it as an alternative to pain because we're saying what's the pain? What are you saying? Uh, anything. I mean, uh, a broken relationship, an embarrassing moment, a you know, a uh uh shame dialogue about my identity of being less than whatever the pain might be emotional pain porn provides a seeming release for that and a relief from that and uh and so i think what the what the spirit is meant to do is kind of keep us apprised of what is true if you think about it when it says that you know god is god is love and then it t- tells us that Jesus, the represent, you know, the physical representation of God on earth, was full of grace and truth. I think then spirit is meant to bring it, bring us back to that. We're told that in in Christ we have the Holy Spirit dwelling with our spirit. We are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. So the spirit is meant to say, "I'm going to lead you into all truth." So therefore. When your soul starts playing around with these ideas like pornography and, yes, the pain you're feeling is real. Yes, the circumstance may be difficult, but spirit to the front is saying mm. we need to remember the truth and that there is a better way than that. It, it might not mean immediate relief from your circumstance or your pain, but there's a better way that will bring joy and contentment and peace. And so that idea of spirit to the front yeah. is more of like saying, let's let's. Bring back to mind what's true, what's right, what's good, mm-hmm. and and override all of these heightening emotions that are saying, but no, I need porn because it's the yeah. only solution for this. And so I think spirit continues to remind us of truth. That's right. And we always go back there. After we're broken, we go back to our spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Say, okay, let's go to God. Okay, spirit, take us back. We've got to go. And you know, when you're talking about this, I'm looking at this other material, and it talks about reconciliation, like, how do you reconcile differences in a marriage? Reconcile. And I got to thinking about it. Well, how do we reconcile ourselves to God? Mm-hmm. And then the other question becomes, how do you reconcile your own insides? Right? Because if we're driven by pain, then our soul program will be, I need pleasure. I need relief. I have pain. If I have bad identity, if I if I don't like myself and I run a program, or if I worry all day long, I need relief, right? So our soul in turmoil will drive us to alcohol or drugs or sex or something, mm-hmm. right, to get out of ourselves. And I do so th- let me finish. Yeah, my my sure. point was reconciliation. How do we reconcile this old bad program with a new spiritual growing truth and manage this body so that it works in harmony. And that's why I think one of the things we have to recognize about the spirit, um, you know, especially when we think about the Holy Spirit and the spirit of God is that this reconciling you're talking about is not a chastisement of our body and our soul. Uh, Our bodies are made to feel sensations and feel pleasure. And our soul is made for, uh, you know, growth and contentment and all, you know, so it's not a chastisement. Think of it more like 
course correction. Mm. So in terms of the reconciliation, too many people okay. think, hey, listen, truth, all that's trying to do is is steal my joy and steal fun. And, you know, all you Christians ever talk about is don't, 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 you know? Right. And if anything, I think, you know, I think really what the Spirit is telling us is, no, I'm trying to get you to understand all the things that I say, do, 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 you know, do good, do what's right. Mm. do, th- and And within that, if you think about sexuality in particular god is not anti-sex and so the spirit is saying hey you know what porn is actually going to steal from you the fullness of the joy that i made your sexuality for and so it's not saying chastise chastise for having those feelings or for having those desires it's more of like hey course correction that needs to be directed over here into this context of one man with one woman mm. in the marriage bond. Does that make sense? So yes. it's like the idea of spirit to the front is not saying because I want to beat up soul and body. <laughs> spirit yeah. to the front is saying, no, there's a much better way that is ultimately more satisfying than all these things that you want to go down with porn and other kinds of, you know, sexual And that's on. why we know growing in the spirit helps with the battle. It helps with the soul and the body. Yeah. Right. Because the it's almost like our spirit should grow in and creep into the soul Mm -hmm. and sort of reorder the soul. All the spiritual truths need to slop over and override the old program we picked up. I think about and by the way, listeners, if you want a great place in the word to really unpack what we're talking about Galatians 5 is a great way, great place to go because that talks about this inner battle between, it, it talks in there about the battle between the di- desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. And then it gives us great news about what the fruit of the spirit is. So the more we grow in the spirit, guess what? Things like love, joy, peace, patience, yes. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the things that then end up getting produced and are acted out in our behavior. Yes. And so the verse in Matthew, I don't have my Bible in front of me, but it says, love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, Mm -hmm. right? With all of you, with your body, right? Bring order to your soul so that it's in alignment and, and, and beliefs are consistent with God and with your spirit, with all of your being, be reconciled to truth so that you can have freedom so you're not in pain and you're not doing stupid things. And mm-hmm. you see people all around you that don't have freedom at their soul level. They go to church and they get relief for the moment. Then they go walk out and they walk back into their soul and their tormented beings. And they got no relief and there's no transformation because the lessons aren't going into the soul. Yeah. And I just I want to reiterate, though, that spirit, soul and body are all good Yes. When God made us in his image, he looked at us and said, this is good. This is good that you're made this way. Yes. The thing is, what sin does is sin, sin sort of, sin wants to rob your soul. And so that's why we have all that confusion in our souls, because the soul is the place that sin attacks. Mm. The soul is the place that I guess you could say sin has infected. And so therefore, although we are made alive in our spirit, The battle is in the soul. That's good. So one last thought here about heart, because we didn't tell you that heart transcends. Heart is in the spirit and the soul and the body. The most passionate places of your whole Mm. being is your heart. And so draw a little something that connects all three of those parts and say, that's the very best of the best of. My most passionate place is my heart. Well, we hope this has been helpful for you just kind of unpacking, hey, how does my body, soul, and spirit fit together? And uh, and and if you're struggling and saying, hey, you know what, I really want to, um, I want to better understand how to deal with the struggles that we've been talking about here in the soul, please reach out to us and we want to help you move forward in your journey. And we look forward to having you back here next time on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com.